Or just find her or him. A uh, girl I work with had her. Mm. I'm getting another one. Sweet. <laughs> oh, I love little kittens. Most guys don't. Uh, I'm a little kitten. Kitten. <laughs> Until they get to be big cats. Well, anyways, um, as you can see, we have a recording here. Um, the date is October 11. Uh, we're here um, because we asked to talk to you and you agreed with that. We also spoke with your attorney and told you that you know, obviously you're free to speak with your attorney and you chose not to contact your attorney and he chose apparently not to contact yeah. you. Um, and you're alright with that? Yes, I am. Okay. Um, Mark has told you a whole bunch of times already that we're not here to get you in trouble. Um, you're not in trouble. You're not under arrest. We're in your residence in Red Granite. You're free to ask us to leave, or you're free to leave. I, I think you can <laughs> the other one and ask us to leave at any time. You don't have to answer questions. Um, and I think the same holds true with what uh, the district attorney in Calumet County had said previously, that uh, you're not going to be in trouble uh, for answers you provide during this interview. Okay. No matter what you tell us. I'm going to be as open and honest and remember everything I can. Well, we appreciate that. Um, why don't we just open it up and just, you know, we may ask specific questions, but we'd like, I guess I personally would like you to talk, talk to us a little about your relationship with Stephen and the abuse that you took. There was a lot of abuse. Talk to us about some of that. Well, at first it was good until I found about him sleeping with Marie, his niece. And then he was physically and mentally abusive. Beat the crap out of me all the time. Choked me all the time. So almost pretty much twice a week. Uh, controlling. I couldn't leave the house. Couldn't talk to my mom. Couldn't talk to Michelle. Couldn't even talk to his sister or anybody unless he was around. Just, it was really, really controlling and really abusive. Looks like you're almost getting a little emotional here. It's just hard for you to talk about. It's hard to remember everything, yeah. but got to get it done and over with so I can move on in my life. Why don't you get a little chronological with us, if you can, please. Tell us about when you first met him and, and uh, take us through some of that, if you could, please. When I first met him, I went out to the trailer to meet Roly. And Stephen and his sister Barbara were outside and they seen somebody new, so they come over. I left, and a couple of days later, I moved in. I was outside working on my car, and he come over, and we got together then, and he never left. What when you're talking to he, you're talking to Stephen. Yeah, Henry. yeah, Stephen. And Rolly is who? Rolly Johnson. Johnson. The guy that owns the trailer the trailer that you ultimately moved into yeah. with Stephen. Yeah. Okay. You told me at one time, Joy, that you met him at a gas station, so that wasn't true. No. Okay. So, how did you hook up with Rolly Johnson and his trailer? Through Michelle. Michelle who? Mueller, my girlfriend that yes. knows Rolly. Okay. And you you tell us you went up there to look at this trailer because you were thinking about renting it? Mm -hmm. Where was Stephen living at that time? I believe in his ice shanty. Okay. And about what time a uh, date was this? What time? What year? What month? What's this about? June nineteenth. What year? I don't remember the year. This is two thousand four, two thousand three. The year he got out after he got out of prison. That, that same year that he got out of prison, yeah. which I believe was 2003. 
So then I met him in 2004. And it was about June 9th, it was June 19th. Yeah. How is it you remember that exact date? Because that was when I, a couple days later I moved in. Okay. All right. And when you moved into the trailer, did you move in there alone? Yep. How long after you moved in there did Stephen move in there with you? About? About a month. Okay. While you were living in the trailer and he was either in ice shanty or wherever he was, did you two start seeing each other in that interim? No, not really. Not till July. Did you ask him to move in with you? No. How did it happen that he got in there with you? We went out and he just moved in and never left. You went out, you mean you started dating? Yeah. Went out, okay. And that's summer of 2003, essentially, right? 2004, yeah. Because he got out in September of 2003. Oh, okay, so summer of 2004. Yeah. All right. I was thinking 2003. So summer of 2004, you're now living with each other, okay. And you said earlier in the, in the talk today that initially things were all right? Not first. But how long were things all right? A month, two months, month and a half in between there. Okay, and was it after that month to month and a half to two month time is that when you you found out about Marie yeah had he done anything abusive toward you prior to that no the first month month and a half mm -hmm. so the racetrack time was after Marie yeah when you went okay tell us about finding out about Marie how did you find out about Marie oh boy She kept calling his phone, and I asked him, well, why does she keep calling you? And we argued about that, and then he told me that he slept with her up north. So you got an argument about her calling, and he ultimately admits to you that he, he slept yeah. with her, that he... I slept with her. Did he say that, or did he say he had sex with her, or what did he say? I believe he said he fucked her. And I appreciate that. Whatever language he uses when we're look, looking for quotes and stuff, um, go ahead and, and use that language. And he said he, he did that up north. Mm -hmm. Where up north? At the property. In Earl's cabin. What did you say in response to that, or what was your response? I told him he's sick, sleeping with a niece and a minor. How old was Marie at that time? Do you remember? I have no idea. She was under 18? Yeah. What did he say in response to that? There's nothing sick about it. She's not a blood relation. And I love her. And then after that's when he started beating me because I told him that he's sick for sleeping with her and having anything to do with her because she is his niece, blood or not. He said he loved her? Yeah. They were going to get married and everything. So Marie was pretty much hook, line, and sinkered on this? She, she yeah. Was she used to write him notes this, yeah. all the time saying that she can't wait to, for him to buy the house and they can move in together. And she'd call him morning, noon, and night asking him how she should wear her hair. Or, really? No. Yeah. Do you tell you of any other times that he 
had sex with her? One other time at Barbara's house. Everybody was up north, and Marie and Barbara came home early. That was right after he choked me, and I called the cops on him. Okay. So In between the, the racetrack incident when he choked me. So he told you about about that second time that he had yep. sex with Marie, and it was in Barbara's house. I don't know if it was in her house uh -huh. or in the ice shanty, because I know that they were in the ice shanty, but then they went into Barbara's house and where was slept Barbara? Her. I have no idea. This ice shanty, where'd that, where'd that go ultimately? He Just, burnt it. He burnt it. Okay. Did Bart know about the sex between Marie and Steve? I <clears> don't know. She knows how crazy Marie was over Stephen, but I don't know if she knows about the sex. Okay. So you have have this this argument. Did the argument, the initial argument, when he told you that he had sex with sex with um, with Marie, did that one turn physical? No. That's when I told him to pack his shit and get out. And I just started throwing his stuff out the door from the dryer because the door was right there. Right. And that's when I seen a shirt that she had bought him and I started ripping it and he went to grab it and that's when he hit me on the chin that one time. Okay. He didn't intentionally hit you on the chin that time? That you know of or what? I didn't think he did it intentionally. But thinking about it, who knows, he might have. But yet you two stayed together in the trailer. Yeah. Did he, did he start saying he loves you? Why? What, did he say he was going to leave her? Or? Yeah, he said it was over, but he didn't know she wouldn't leave him alone. Because obviously he, I mean, he told you he loved her. Yeah. Okay. And obviously that didn't make you feel good. No. He said he was confused. He didn't know who he wanted. Oh. Okay. So now, you know, we've gotten to this point, and you said now now the, the controlling, the emotional and physical abuse starts. Mm-hmm. And you, you made a comment probably at least twice a week phys physically abused. Yeah. Take us from that point forward. Just tell us some of the instances. Incidents, please. No, it's always over Marie. I'd say something and he'd either choke me or hit me, throw me against the wall. Describe the choking. What do you mean by choking? Just like you go up and choke somebody. Manual strangulation with the hands around your neck. Yeah. Okay. Did that ever leave marks? Not that I paid attention to. Did it know. cause you to lose consciousness? Just that once. Just that once. Did it cause you to, to lose your breath? Oh, yeah. Do this? How did you get him to stop from strangling you? I don't know how he stopped. He just stopped. Okay. You say he threw you up against the walls and stuff like that? Did he mm -hmm. throw you down to the ground? Oh, yeah. And did he strike you? Lots of times. I walked around, I'd say, for a good month with a black eye. With a fist? Mm hmm Describe where, where, where he would hit you most often and how. In the head or in the stomach with his fist. Okay, and you had a black eye once. Did he cause you to bleed? Yeah, when he, he hit me in the mouth, we were driving up to his mom's to go up north. And I said something about Marie again, and he punched me in the mouth. And, and it was bleeding from that strike? Yeah. Was anyone else in the truck at that time? No. Okay. <clears throat> As it relates to the, uh, the, the physical abuse somewhat, uh, do you ever threaten you? 
I've been thinking about this since the last time we talked. I didn't take it as a threat at the time, but after I've been thinking about it, I was in the bathtub once, and he come in and said that he could easily kill me and get away with it because I tried attempted suicide three times. And then he was acting like he was going to take the blow dryer out and plug it in and throw it in the tub. And he told me quite a few times that I would never leave him. I'd be with him till I died. I really didn't ask him what he meant by that, but... Did he, um, and I guess that's what my next question was, if he ever threatened you uh, as it related to you ever leaving him. Just said I'd be with him till I died. Did he ever threaten to burn the trailer down with you in it or anything like that? Not that I... You and your either. daughter were in a, an interior room of some sort and uh, he had threatened, you guys went there because he had threatened to burn the trailer down? No. Is that accurate? I mean, yeah, your daughter had told us some to the effect of uh, when she was over visiting at one time, you guys had to hide in the trailer because he was threatening to pour gas around it, I believe it was, and burn it down. Do you remember that? No. Okay. Do you ever threaten your parents? To burn their house down, yeah. Well, tell us about that. I was working at uh, Aaron's. And he picked me up and was taking me back to the jail. And he said if I ever left him, or, because he had heard that they wanted to sue him because he was beating me, or something like that. And he said if they ever did that, or if I ever left him, he'd burn their house down with them in it. And Tiffany too. Take him serious? Yeah. That's why I never left him. You mentioned Tiffany, is that your daughter? Mm -hmm. Do you ever threaten uh, Tiffany in any way? Not necessarily not physically. Threaten, but not in front of me. Anything about putting her in a foster home, taking her away from uh, grandma and grandpa? Just taking her away from them so I could have her back. Okay. We had heard that she, he threatened to take her away and put her in a foster home. Well, I didn't know nothing about that. No. Okay. Did you ever see Stephen yell at Tiffany? Yeah. In what manner did he yell at her? We were up north and the boys were teasing her with bugs and she was screaming so he just lost his temper and started screaming at her to shut up or she's gonna he's gonna lock her in the um, RV. You're camping at this time? Yeah. In an RV. Is that an RV Stephen had bought? Or yeah. Where's that now? Up north. Where up north? On the parents' property? Yeah. Was it up there when you went to jail? Yeah. And it was never back at the property to your knowledge? No. During this period of time? No. That's what she was doing to me when we were on the phone. <laughs> did did Stephen ever touch Tiffany or get no. physical with her? Do you remember an incident where you were in the trailer, you had a computer, and Stephen came in and, and got on top of her and straddled her and tickled her? Type yeah, thing? I do. Did you? What did you think about that? Was it innocent? Do you think you was I more than that or didn't like it? And I told him to get the fuck off of her. Well, we're just playing. I said, no, you don't sit on a kid like that and play. He's, get off of her. And did he? And not at first. Okay, what was she saying? What was Tiffany saying? She was laughing and 
playing with him. Okay, did Tiffany tell him to get off? Yeah. Did he get upset? Not that I remember. Okay. Getting back to threats, um, do you know whether he's ever threatened any other family members of yours or friends? Michelle just told me that he threatened her. What was that about? I have no idea. She told me that she called his cell phone, I guess. And he told her that if she talked to me anymore, he was going to go down to Hartford and hunt her down and kill her. And that's coming from Michelle? Yeah. Did Steve ever tell you that? Nope. He just wouldn't let me talk to her. I know I'm jumping around here a little, but we're getting a feel for maybe what additional questions we want to ask. Um, as it relates to his controlling nature, did he put limits on who you could see, talk to? And do I that? couldn't see anybody. Is that a yes? He told yes, he that, did. That he, you couldn't see anybody? Yeah, I couldn't see anybody. I couldn't talk to my mom, Michelle. You got mad if I call and talk to Tiffany. Could you go anywhere? No. Unless he was with or yep. what? Okay. That's the only way. <laughs> All right. Um, what would he do if he found out that you, you were doing these things? Disobey. Get mad. It, it, would he strike you at times then or for those? Only if I lipped off to him, which I usually did because so if you talked back to him or disagreed with him, then you would get physical? Yeah. Did you ever, did you ever hit him? No, because it just would have been worse. Okay. What about, let's go to, um, we had talked last time about the sexual nature between you guys, between you and Steve. And you had told the probation agent one thing and you kind of told us another thing. I never told her that. Okay, well let's, let's go over that again. How many times would you and Steve have sex a day? In the beginning, five, six. A day? Mm -hmm. His idea or your idea? Five. Yours? Yeah. You mean the beginning, so after a couple of months that would dwindle a little bit or what? After I found out about Marie. Okay. What happened then? Maybe once, twice a week. Did you ever tell anybody that he would make you have sex even though you didn't want to and you were sore? Do you remember telling anybody that? No. Did that ever happen? No. Did he ever force you to have sex? At the time, I didn't think he was forcing me, but one time I didn't want to, and he took my clothes off, and I guess forced himself on me, yeah. Um, did he ever tie you up? Yeah. Tell us about that. It was just something you guys did all the time? Or? No, just once. Okay. And what did he use to tie you up? Rope. Like an orange clothesline rope. And where did he tie you up? To my bed. By your bed, you mean the bed in the bedroom that you guys always do? Yeah. Okay. Tell, how did he tie you up? Explain that to me. My hands to the poster board things up there and my feet on the footboard. So like the spindles? Yeah. Up above? That's where your hands were? Yeah. And your legs tied to the footboard? Yeah. Spread eagle fashion? Yeah. And you did that willingly at that time? Yeah. Did you ever use handcuffs or anything? No. Once he had you tied up, did he 
do anything out of the ordinary then, or threaten you no. in any way, or just... Okay. You just have sex then? Yeah. And when you're finished, she untied you? Yeah. Could you have gotten out of the bindings? Yeah. You ever talk about that other times, wanting to do it again or do it more? That type of. No, not really, no. Just whenever I went to jail, he said that he was going to go buy handcuffs and use them when I got out. Or your sexual relationship with, with Stephen, anything? What, did he have any interests that were just different than just normal intercourse? Like fantasies, uh, you talk about or want to act out? Or? No. Anything with bringing other women in, anything like that? He's mentioned one time bringing in another woman. Anybody specific? No. Did he ever talk to you about Teresa? No. He ever talked to you about the photographer? Maybe not mentioning her name or? Just that she was going to come out and take pictures. Whenever I was in jail and she would come out or whatever, I never knew nothing because I didn't need to know what was going on. So you tell you? Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Did you ever see her? Just the once. But not clearly so. I couldn't. All I know is she had dark hair. any comments about her sexually or anything that you're aware of? Not to me. Okay. I'm going to ask you this point blank. Did he ever tell you any time about killing Teresa? No. Anything that he ever said to you that makes you think he may have done this? Just that it was my fault this happened. I was kind of concerned about us getting our hands on that camera initially. Then it could, I heard some conversations between you and him and things from the jail. And any reason he was concerned about us getting our hands on that camera? I have no idea. If Steve were going to hide something out of the compound, if you will, you know. I Where think, would he hide it? Yeah. <laughs> That's a good question. In a junk car, in the trailer, in the garage. All kinds of places out there. Yeah. Depending on what it was. Burn little, it, uh, I don't know. There's a little trailer, like a camper trailer. Probably southeast of the trailer. I think it would be southeast. Not in the pit. Oh, maybe 300 yards. We cross that fence line of all those cars are there. There's a fence and there's cars a little ways in. There was a like a little camper trailer pulled behind. Anything with that to your knowledge? Oh, they got that. Him and Chucky went and picked that up out of the river. If he hit it, I don't think he'd hide anything. I have yeah. no idea. Uh, to your knowledge, you ever go in there? Not to my knowledge. You were never in there with him? No.
Did he ever talk about burning things? I mean, was he fascinated with fire for some reason that you're aware of? Or he told me he burned his ice shanty. No. Was he? I have no idea. Did he like to burn stuff? Only because I would always burn stuff. Okay. I, I think we've covered this before, but just to refresh my memory, did you ever own Daisy Fuentes' no. jeans? Not to my knowledge, no. No? Okay. You would probably know that because it's a pretty distinct brand if, no. you, if you own those. Okay. And he never had... Or any, did any? Did he or did anyone in his family have a uh, razor phone, Motorola razor phone? To your knowledge? Not to my knowledge. How about a Canon camera, sure shot camera? I think Barbara does. I'm not sure. Okay. What about um, a PDA? You know what that is? It's one of those Palm Pilot. Yeah, guys. Palm Pilot. That's my own. Did Steve ever own one that you're aware of? Nope. That, not that I'm aware of, anyways. Okay. Steve ever say anything to the effect that he could kill someone and get away with it, they can't touch him now? To that effect, anything to that effect? Just to me. I mean, was it his opinion in his mind that he was pretty untouchable, or is yeah. that not true? Oh, yeah. Why was that? Because he just served 18 years for something he didn't do, so nobody could touch him. Any of these occasions that he uh, beat you, did you fear for your life on any of those occasions, where you thought he might go too far? Just when he was choking me. Tell, tell us, in, to the best of your recollection and detail, at the time that you went unconscious. I came home from the races. To my knowledge, he was up north. He, I guess, raced home. This is what he told me. He raced home to erase all the messages he had on the phone from calling me. and Calling me a slut and a whore and everything else. I got home. Either I called him or he called me. I don't remember. I think he called me. And asked what I was doing. I said I just walked in the door. And he asked what I was wearing. And for some reason that was funny. So I said, well, you should know. You're probably watching me. And I turned around and he was there in the trailer. And then... I don't know. He was pissed because I ended up going to the races when I told him I wasn't going to. And my mom and dad and Tiffany were there. And an ex-boyfriend that I didn't even really see. And he just freaked out and started beating me and choking me. And that's when I called the cops. And then he choked me again. And that's when I passed out and I woke up. He was dragging me my, by my sweatshirt out the back door. What did he say he was going to do? Nothing. He just said, we're leaving. What did he he actually, to? yeah, I would have. I was actually afraid then that he was going to take me in the pit and do something with me. And what if he wouldn't have come to? Did he think he had killed you? I don't know. He didn't say it. No, and I never questioned Dragging you out the back door. Is that the door toward the back of the trailer, yeah. toward the garage? Yeah. You know, we can't sit here and go over and nor could you remember each time he beat on you, I imagine, right? But uh, uh, from your description, two times a week, maybe more, maybe, you know, is it accurate then, I think I mentioned this the last time we talked to you, when someone um, had said that they wanted to help you, a child had said to their parent that they wanted to help you, can we help? Can we help Jody because Stephen hurts her so much? That's an accurate statement. Uh, I, take I it, have no idea, but that could be an accurate yeah, statement could be. if someone was around enough to see that you were getting bruised yeah. and beat on. 
Did you confide in some of the other people, like um, Earl's kids, maybe like Kayla or? I think I told Kayla once that he was abusive. I don't remember. How about Candy? No. Barb? No. Barbara knew. Barbara knew? Yeah. They all knew. They've seen the bruises. Chuck ever hit you or do anything like that? Mm -hmm. Yeah, we asked just once before, did you ever have any relation with Chuck? Hell sexual? no. No. What about Steve's parents? How do you get along with them? I got along with his dad good. Oh yeah? Well, because I always drink with him up north. Oh. His mom, she don't like me, so... Why? I couldn't answer that. Probably because it's the way Stephen talks about me to her. When's the last time you talked to his mom? When I was put on a no contact with the pastor. You're on a no contact with the pastor? Mm -hmm. When did that come out? Right before I moved in here, two weeks ago. Really? Mm -hmm. I wasn't aware of that. No. So you haven't had any contact with the pastor then either? No. Why is there no contact between you and the pastor? Because I guess she was asking Stephen about the car or something. I have no idea. Okay. Pastor's still trying to contact you? No. Nope. So you don't have anything to do with her anymore? No. Nope. She doesn't know my house number either. What's her motive in all this? Why is she involved I in have no idea. She ever confide in you and told you? She just told me that God came to her and said that Stephen's innocent and she needs to be there for him. Okay. And that she needed to save me. Did it She's help? She's a real loopy. She's loopy? Oh, yeah. Steve Did it help? Yeah. I got my job from her. Okay. Steve is still talking to her? I have no idea. Last I knew, she told him not to call because I wasn't there and I couldn't pay her phone bill for his calls. Stephen tried to call you any more times than nope. the last time you told us about? Nope. Well, he might have tried, but he put the block on my phone. But there hasn't been anything since then? Mm -hmm. Anybody try to contact you for Stephen? No. Chucky, Earl, nope. Mom, Dad? No. Nope. Uh, yeah. His mom called me. When was I? I was outside because that's the only place I can talk on it. Told me that I'm supposed to call his old lawyer, Stephen Glenn mm -hmm. or Walt Kelly, one of the two. But Why? To get a restraining order. From, for, against who? You guys. Oh, okay. <laughs> Why do you think that is? So I wouldn't talk to you. Mm -hmm. Why do you think they don't want you to talk to us? Because I can hurt Stephen. By telling the truth? Mm. And I'm not going to lie for him no more. I, I can't do it. It was too hard the way it was. Well, I'm glad to see that you turned the corner on I wanted to a long time ago, but it's scared. We understand that. But you've come around, you're doing the right thing. You're doing the right thing for Teresa's family. Yeah. You know, this is a very hard month for them, obviously. Yeah, it is. Yeah, what, Thursday I came home early from work, and I seen that they dedicated that uh, gym to her mm -hmm. on the news. Is there anything we're forgetting to ask right now that you can think of that you are dying to tell us? I don't know. I thought of something when you were talking, but I forgot what it was now. Oh, about... Oh, how did, did you ask it? I don't know, but he asked me if I was ever afraid or anything. Or Stephen mentioned something about... I don't I forget Didn't how you... you kill someone get yeah, away with it? Yeah, there or you if go. If you were ever afraid of your life. That time he choked me, I was afraid because he told me a while ago that he could kill somebody 
and hide them in the junk cars and nobody would ever find them. So he did tell you something like that? Yeah. Okay. I get the impression that there's a lot of this type of talk and abuse and it's, it's hard for you to, to remember it all. Well, I'm sure once you guys leave, I'll remember more. Did he ever talk about the girl, the lady that he ran off the road that had the child in the car? Ever talked mm -hmm. to you about that? No. Did you know about that? I read it in some newspaper clippings he had from when he was arrested okay. before. Did you ask him about it? I think I did. He told me uh, it was his cousin or something like that. Okay. And he thought there was somebody hiding in her back seat, so he was going to try and help her or something like that. Okay. That's what he told me. Okay. Did he ever tell you, or did you ever ask him about times that he apparently was exposing himself to cars driving by, including her? I asked him about that because my mom said something to me about it. And he said it wasn't him. It was Earl. Earl, Earl or Chucky, one one of his brothers. So I believe him. What about um, Brendan? Did he hang out with Brendan quite a bit? They'd come over and help him work on cars, clean up the yard. Who would have been there the most out of all the kids? By Steve. Blaine. Is Brent, I mean, knowing Brendan the way I know Brendan now, would Steve kind of be the, would he kind of do what Steve told him to do? Yeah. Steve was kind of the leader there? Yeah. I think Brendan was afraid of him. Why isn't Brendan telling the truth now? Why is he he's saying that he lied to us? Is he afraid of Steven? Is it the influence of the family? What, what's the... I have no idea. Did, when you were around, I mean, obviously we searched the trailer very well. There was you know, quite a bit of porn and stuff in there. Did Steve ever provide any of that to Brendan? You know, the magazines no or anything like that? I have no idea. Brendan ever aggressive towards... Anybody, women, that you're aware of? Not that I'm aware of. Okay. Brenda never watch you guys have sex? Not that I'm aware of. Okay. When they were taking pictures, when you guys took pictures of yourselves, though, who would do that? Him. Steven. Okay. Anybody else? Ever have anybody else do it mm -hmm. for you? You heard Stephen have sex one time in the motorhome with Tiffany in the motorhome with you? No. She Never. thinks she did. Up north? No. She says she heard you guys having sex. No. Never in front of Tiffany. Well, Tiffany wouldn't have been able to see you, but she said she heard it. And you know, she asked what you guys were doing, and Stephen said, making love. No. And she would have been able to see it because he broke the door. Well, it was that, dark, I think. But. No, never had sex in there with her there. So Tiffany's wrong? Yeah. But I think I remember her asking what we were doing, and he said that. And then I slapped him and told him, shut the fuck up. And then I went and laid out by her, so she knew nothing was going on. Uh -huh. Well, then he got mad because I was out there by her. He ever hit you in front of Tiffany? Tiffany see any of the abuse? I think once. She said she didn't like how he treated you. No. That must have been more verbally and that controlling stuff and yeah. stuff like that. He treated complete strangers better than he treated me. Why is that? I don't know. Because maybe you were a possession? 
Probably, yeah. He treated me like I was a servant, there to serve him. Did you ever get the, the idea that that's how he believed women were? That's, that's their role? Yeah, I did. In life? Yeah. Do you have any questions? No. What motivates Stephen? I have no idea. Do you understand the question though? Yeah. Like money, sex, drugs, rock and roll. What, what motivates Stephen? The most. Money. Money more important to him than sex? Yeah, that's hard to answer. I don't know. Is that what sex <laughs> important to him? Yeah, I guess. Well, he never said. But he did make a comment with all the money and I'm getting, I can have any bitch out there. So that's kind of sexual. Yeah, it's, yeah, yeah, I suppose. Or that tells you how he feels yeah. about women. Yeah. The comment that he make, made to you about none of this would have happened if you wouldn't have been in here, what do you think he means by that? That if I wasn't in there, he wouldn't have done this. Why do you think you being in jail made him do that? I don't know. Because I wasn't there? I don't know. From the beat on and push around? I don't know. Okay. Do you feel he has to have some outside of prison? Do you feel he has to have something like that in his life? A woman in his life like that that he yeah. can possess? Did he ever make comments about wanting to go back to prison? Not to me. Not that I can remember. I really don't have anything further. Yeah, I don't know how many more times, you know, we'll talk to you. This may be the last time. And we want to make sure that, that you know, it sounds like you've gotten a lot off your chest. I did. And we want to make sure we give you that opportunity before we leave to get anything else off your chest. Um, as, as, as pertains to the sexual part of Stephen and, and your relationship, have you told us everything? That so I've remembered you, so far, yeah. Okay. And the abuse, I mean, that that's pretty overwhelming to me, you know, multiple times a week. I had two miscarriages because of him. Wow. See, we didn't know that. Yeah. And then, you had confirmed pregnant? Yeah. And he beat you yeah. and you had miscarriages. Yeah. And he wouldn't let me go to the doctor. I was going to say, did you ever go to the hospital mm -hmm. or doctors? He wouldn't let me. So you think because of him beating on you, that's why you had the miscarriage? Mm -hmm. Do you, was that diagnosed by a doctor or just what you believe happened? Just what I believe happened. Okay. Because he hit you in the, you said yeah. mentioned before, he hit you in the stomach yeah. area, abdomen area. Mm -hmm. Did he know you were pregnant? Yeah. Did he do that on purpose then? I believe he did. Did he ever say anything about that? No. Just that, oh, it probably wasn't mine anyways. And it happened two times? Mm -hmm. Do you remember about when that happened? The first one was exactly, it was my birthday, uh, September 11th, 2004, so that's a year you, after he got out. That's when you had your first miscarriage? Mm -hmm. What happened that day? He acted like nothing happened. I mean, what happened uh, to cause it, specifically, that you think? Him beating me and from him choking me. Because okay. that was a few days before that. A week or so, something like that. And it didn't seem to bother him? No. Do you remember the second time? What date? No, it was... Summer? So the following summer, 2005 yeah. maybe, before yeah. you went to jail? Tell us about that day. <clears throat> or what led up to that day, what, what happened with the pregnancy? We were up north, and he got mad at me 
for some stupid reason I don't remember. It's just I think I was talking to Blaine and Brendan and joking around with them, and he got jealous and took me back to the RV and started bitching at me, and I told him I hate you. And then he threw me down on the bed and started hitting me. Where did you hit them? In the face and in the stomach. Okay. How long after that did you have the miscarriage? Two days. How far along pregnant were you? Month and a half, two months. And confirmed by a doctor or by this test of your own? Or? The test of my own. Okay. Did you ever go to the doctor after you had those miscarriages? No, he wouldn't let me. The first miscarriage was that how many days after the beating? About, if you recall. No more than a week. Similar beating, face, mm -hmm. abdomen. Did he ever kick you? No. No. Did he ever threaten you with a knife? No. Did he ever threaten to shoot you? No. The guns that were in his room, what kind of guns were they? Do you remember? A muzzle loader, I think. Okay. And a 22. And where were those in the room? Hanging on the wall above the bed. Okay. I think we talked about this last time we talked, but you've seen Steve shoot those guns? Mm -hmm. Both of them? Mm-mm. It's -mm. a 22. You've seen Steve only shoot the 22? Mm -hmm. Did he have ammunition for those? For the 22? Yeah. And where would that have been kept? In the desk or in the dresser. Okay. And what occasions would he take that 22 and shoot it? Just if ducks were flying over or there was a cat outside. Sure. I shot it too, though. Well, okay. I only shot up the burning barrel. Sure. So when he was done shooting it, what do you do with the gun then? Put it back. On that rack? Mm hmm Okay. I think when we talked the last time also, you told us that the room was different mm -hmm. in the pictures that we showed you. Mm hmm So if I'm correct, when you walk into the bedroom, if you keep walking, you run into the bed. Yep. And that's when you last saw it. Yep. And the bed would have been underneath what? A window. Two, two windows. Two windows? Yep. And the headboard would have been underneath those two windows? Yep. And when did you last see the bed like that? When I went to jail in August. August of 2005. Yep. Okay. And the pictures I showed you had the bed turned. Underneath the guns. And that, you never saw it like yep. that. Did he ever talk about rearranging the bedroom? I told him I wanted to a long time ago, but he said no. Okay. Did, did the night of October 31, you said previously that you had remembered a couple calls? You called him. Mm -hmm. You probably had time to think about that because I asked you questions about his mood that night. Anything new on that? Any other recollections on, on how he talked that night? No. Okay. Did you guys have a vacuum cleaner in the trailer? Mm hmm Did you do the vacuuming or did he do the vacuuming more often? I did. You did? So he went, was he a neat freak? Yeah. You like to keep the trailer clean? Yeah, but I cleaned it all But you time. did it. Yeah. Okay, so he wasn't the one that did it. No. Yeah. Per se. No. Yeah. Okay, did you have a, a carpet shampoo? Yep, yeah. he bought that for me so I could keep the carpets clean. When did he buy that about? <sighs> that summer? Or yeah, that summer. And where? Walmart. Okay, did he ever mention anything to you about that carpet cleaner? Mm-mm. -mm. After you went to jail, and any telephone calls or not that I remember. And you guys bought that, not Barb. No, we bought that one. Okay. Because we went back and bought one for Chucky. Okay. Would it have been normal for Brendan to come over and help clean house, or clean the garage, or to help clean out in the garage? Yeah. Okay. What would they normally do when they're cleaning the garage? Sweep the floors. Rearrange the stuff on the floors to a different spot. Okay. 
Would you ever use any substances like gas, turpentine, or bleach on the garage floor? If there was oil or something on the floor. Bleach? I have no idea. Okay. I've never seen him do that. You've never seen him use bleach on the floor? No. Did you ever see him use bleach to clean anything up? No. Did you have bleach in the house when you left? I think we did. Okay. Did he do laundry? No. When you were there? When I was there, no. I'm assuming he must have done that when, when I When I left, yeah. Okay. Uh, what about the cut on the finger? Anything different on that that you didn't tell us before? No. Just what he told me. He got it working. In the flatbed or something. I think he said the flat, okay. flat flat. Did you see it? Did he show it to yeah. you? Was it I told him he should have got stitches. But pretty good cut? Yeah. Was it scabbed over when you saw it? or The first time I don't think it was. It was pretty open yet? Yeah. Okay. And was this close to that time period, October? It was the beginning of October, the end of September, something like that. When was the last time you saw him prior to October 31st, which was a Monday? I seen him the day after. Okay. He picked me up for AODA, and I went to touch his leg, but he wouldn't let me touch him. He acted like he was sore. Really? Yeah, I just remember that. That yeah. next day? Yeah. So that was November 1st? Yeah. So he picks you up at at the jail at the and take you to the AODA yeah. and you go to touch his leg and he says what exactly? He just pushed me away. He acted like he was sore. He said, there's people around they can see. Said, We're in the truck. Who's going to see anything? Have you ever acted like that before? No. And then he dropped me off and went and bought his mom a TV and me a necklace and earrings and came back. Or and I tried it again and... You tried, you tried to touch him again? Mm -hmm. And he pushed me away again. Same thing. Where on the leg? Like right in here. Upper thigh? Yeah. And he acted like he was sore. Toward the, the groin yeah. area? Did you see his hand on that night where this cut was? No. Do you recall seeing it? No, I Bandaged didn't. or not? Or? I, don't, I wasn't paying attention. Think about that, that particular guy. Any other comments or actions that he did? No, just besides funny. pushing me away. Wasn't with him long enough. He'd pick me up, drop me off, pick me up again, and drop me off again. Was that standard procedure yeah. when he took you to the meetings? Yeah. Do you have any conversation? Like, what did you do last night or anything like that? No. I figure I talked to him. He's not going to tell me anyways. I wasn't there, so I don't need to know what's going on. That's what he always told me. Okay. It's none of my business. If we need to contact you again, is that okay with you? Yeah, that's fine. Okay. Anytime. And if you think of anything else, specifically call. instances, please call him. Okay. I know that they may pop into your head, you know, whether you're sleeping, waking up. So well, it's like I was at work yesterday, and me and Diane were talking, and I thought of something I wanted to say to you guys, but then she kept talking, and I totally forgot what it was. Well, stuff comes up, write it down. Yeah, yeah. I got a notepad at work now. Do us a favor, and yeah, keep a notepad yeah. of that. Your friend Michelle, when you were living with Stephen and you were getting abused by Stephen, did you often tell her? on the phone about this stuff? Sometimes, not all the mm -hmm. time, because I didn't want her to run and tell my mom. Because okay. it was her impression that the, you, you were prob and you were right on, that it was happening multiple times a week. It was. And that Stephen didn't want you having any contact with her. None at all. I think that's all we got for you then. If there's anything else, you give us a call um, and uh, we will, um, if we think of something, we'll give you the time or I'll give you a call. Okay. 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 During the day, the house phone. After 
2.30, my cell phone. Okay, sounds good. Okay, it's 11.58 in the morning. I'm going to turn the recorder off then. If I can see it.